Hi, welcome to the Mission Control Center and the International Space Station Flight Control Room in particular. And uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, are going to have a special guest joining us joining us from Kennedy Space Center today, Dr. Paul Schallhorn, who is working on the next iteration of the SPHERES experiment. That's the Synchronized Position Hold Engage Reorient Experimental Satellites that we talk about really a pretty good bit. Uh, they do a lot of work with that on the space station and have been for a number of expeditions. They found a lot of different ways to... Uh, to use that uh, technology and, and perform different experiments with it. And one of them is going to be going up next week on board Cygnus to the space station. That's the one that Dr. Shellhorn is working on. I believe he's connected. Dr. Shellhorn? Yes. We, we have a, an experiment that's going up to station that's going to be using spheres uh, to capture fluid motion inside of a, a small acrylic tank, excuse me, a Lexan, Lexan tank. The thought for us is, I work in launch services program. Our, our primary purpose is launching of most of the science uh, missions. And many of the, the launch vehicles we use have liquid upper stages. And during the, our launches, the liquid upper stage uh, will end up usually having uh, a coast period. And during that coast period of, of microgravity, we're concerned with what is happening uh, in the uh, fuel and oxidizer tanks of those upper stages. So. so in order to, to understand that, excuse me, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so during that coast phase, liquid's moving around, we're wanting to know what's going on, and we predict it using um, numerical tools called computational fluid dynamics. But we don't have any real test data in which to, to anchor these models. So this experiment is giving us all the test data that we're hoping to use to simulate what happens to um, the propellant tanks uh, on uh, our, our vehicles. We're using this to anchor our modeling methodology, if you will. So how, how is this different than how you're able to test it on the ground? What do you gain from testing it in space? Well, where our concerns are is we actually have gone and done a whole series of tests. We've sponsored it. Um, the Launch Services Program with me as PI has sponsored the Florida Institute of Technology, um, specifically uh, Dr. Dan Kirk and Dr. Hector Gutierrez, to perform a whole series of, of liquid slosh maneuvers. Sloshing basically meaning liquid moves uh, around um, in, in, a, in a random fashion. And so we've sponsored it on the ground, we've sponsored some zero-g flights, but our biggest concern has always been what happens when you're in a microgravity situation. Um, upper stage fires, it, it, it shuts down as, as it coasts, getting ready to do another uh, firing to, to send the satellite into whatever orbit or trajectory that it needs to go into. And so our concern is what's happening during that, that time frame. Uh, from, from a vehicle controls perspective, is sloshing around and o overtaking the, the vehicle control system from the um, area that I, I have interest in, what is it doing to, to the conditioning of the propellant? Will it be able to, to uh, fire uh, as needed? Great. So where did the idea of using the SPHERES uh, satellites on the space station for this experiment come from? That's a good question. Um, a number of years ago, when, when we were in the midst of doing a lot of our ground testing, of slosh, the folks from MIT came down, specifically uh, Dr. David Miller, and he was the person at MIT that heads up the lab that developed spheres. Uh, and he was coming around to show us what spheres was. When he came around and showed our group, the first thing that came to my mind is this is the next logical step that we can end up using to, to advancing our understanding of, of liquid behavior during a coast phase. So I got Dr. Miller and, and Dr. Kirk together to start postulating how could we end up doing an integrated slosh modeling uh, capability using spheres and using some of the expertise that was developed by Florida Tech. What were you able to figure out? How does, how's the experiment going to work? Well, the, the experiment that you see that will be going up and hopefully have a picture of this has two of the spheres that are at the end of two long arms. And in the middle is a uh, tank that is clear that's filled with uh, liquid water uh, that we're has a, a food now. coloring We've in got it. The, so the two, they're, they're, uh, I think that's a little bit better, the two satellites, I guess, on either end, the red and blue. 
And the tank is in yep. the middle? Yes. And then the tank has two cameras pointing at it. And so we can know what, where the, the, the motion is at any given time because we have uh, accelerometers on board. And so we, we know what, let's say, the impulse is. And we're using spheres in this case just as, as our propulsion system. And then we'll end up having it go through a set of maneuvers typical of those of, a, of an upper stage. And we'll watch through the two cameras that are, that are mounted 90 degrees apart. They're kind of sitting up on, a, on an arm to look down into the, into the tank and see how the motion goes. Then we'll compare that directly to our, our modeling simulations. And so the main idea is to, is to verify the simulations that you've already modeled. Right, our concern is, is, is there some physics that we, that we are not currently capturing. Uh, on the ground, everything seems to be dominated by uh, gravity, but when you get into a microgravity situation, our concern is, is the things such as surface tension uh, dominating? Is there something else in the physics that, that, that we don't know? So we just want to make sure we have a, a good, proper understanding before we, we end up using this modeling tool any further in, in launches that involved um, multi-million dollar to billion dollar satellites. And so we want, it's, it's our way of trying to get a good investment for, for what we're doing in the future. Sounds like it's worth getting that exactly right. So when will we, yes. let's see, we're, we're gonna, we expect it to launch next week on board Cygnus. Um, and then when will we actually Correct. be seeing the experiment start on board the space station? Uh, I believe that the, the first round of experiments is going to be starting sometime in the mid-January time frame. And then we have two more um, experiment sets coming up in February and March. And then based on, on the result of those, we'll end up evaluating and see if we can end up asking for additional test sessions. All right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing those. Thanks so much for talking with us. We really appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much.